All right, so thanks for your question. And uh, you kind of have an indeterminate type. And so there's, uh, you know, Go is statically typed, but then there's some things in Go where like with an empty interface, every type implements the empty interface. And so remember when we're working in Go, we're dealing with values and values have to be of a certain type. And so if I went to like, you know, uh, Golang Playground, and uh, and I could start to do things, right? So I could I could do like a x colon equal 42, and I could print out uh, x, and that's going to give me uh, the value 42. And I could also print out the type of x. So I'm just going to copy that and do a print f, and uh, and then here I'll do percent t and a new line, and then pass that value in. And so we have values, right? 42, and it's of type int. So values are of a certain type. Values are of a certain type. And in Go, we have we have um, we have assertions, and we also have conversions. We don't say casting in Go. Other languages will talk about casting. So first, let's take a look at conversions. We have conversions and and assertions. Okay, and so first let's take a look at conversion. So let's say I created my own type, and uh, it is type hot dog, and the underlying type is an int. So now I could do y var y hot dog, right? So var y is of type hot dog, and it's equal to 43. And so let's print that out now. Cool, right? So we've got 42 and it's an int and we have 43 and it's of type hot dog from package main. And, uh, and so this value 43 is of type hot dog. If I wanted to, I could say that uh, Z is colon equal to, and I'm gonna do an assertion here and I'm asserting that Y is an int. The underlying type is an int. And so now when I do this, Right now it is an int. So here's the x, here's the y, and here's the z. So we have values of a type, and this is assertion. Okay, that's a no, that's conversion. <laughs> Sorry, that's conversion. So we just did a conversion. We converted type hot dog to an int, and we're able to do that because the underlying, the underlying type of type hot dog is an int. So it's like, hey, this is type hot dog, but we also know it's really an int. The underlying type's an int. So we use convert it, conversion to convert type hot dog to type int, and we assigned it to the variable z. So the values have a type. That's one of the most important things. Values have a type. Values have a type. Statically typed language. So that was conversion. This is assertion. So assertion is used when you have an indeterminate type, right? You don't have, you know, you don't know what the type is. An interface is a is a, a Empty interface is everything implements the empty interface because um, you know everything has at least no methods, right? Like this type hot dog right here has no methods uh, to it, and and so it would implement the empty interface. And so with the empty interface, you could assert that is of certain type. An assertion is kind of like a little bit more powerful. You're just like saying, hey, this is this type, and so that's an assertion. We're asserting that. And we're then assigning it to here. We're assigning the value to here of that type. We're assigning it to this variable. So this variable will be a value of type float64. And we're asserting that this indeterminate type is a float64. And we're using the comma OK idiom to do that. You could go to effective go and you could search for comma OK. And when you search for comma OK, you'll find this thing here, comma OK, and it describes the comma OK idiom. And so that's the comma OK idiom. Last thing I, I would say about this code is I am not sure if you could take the address of an empty interface. So let me know. Uh, just like say, yes, you can. It totally worked. <laughs> so let me know your thoughts on that when you run this code. And also, when you unmarshal data, you should try to get a data structure that matches the data that's coming in as JSON. Get a data structure that matches that da data and unmarshal straight into that, whether it's a struct or a slice or some combination. And you could do Golang json uh golang uh golang struct json to struct json to struct and it brings up this website json to go convert i think this is it 
Sweet. And so you can paste the JSON in here and it'll give you the Go data structure that corresponds to that JSON. So that's really super helpful. I hope this was helpful to you. And if you haven't done so already, check out this amazing, great website built for the greater common good. I am working for the greater common good to help others. Greater Commons is a platform that allows you to share your knowledge, passion, passion, wisdom, skills with the world, whether it's playing the guitar or programming, what you love to do, you know, program or cooking, or if you know how to speak a foreign language or speak a language, you could teach other people how to speak that language, create courses, share your knowledge and passion with the world. You charge $20 for a course. You could help a lot of people. It's a very nominal fee. People can get into your course, 20 bucks. You could help a lot of people and you can generate additional revenue. Uh, our instructors receive a 50% royalty on all courses sold through our site. So if you had a $20 course and a thousand people took it, that'd be 20,000 in revenue and you would get a check for $10,000. So it's a pretty amazing platform, Greater Commons. Check it out and have a great day. <laughs>